Okay, gang, I have gotten a lot of demand to teach the diamond system. So today I am going to teach it to you and I'm going to make it as simple as possible. It really is not that complicated, but it is difficult to explain at times. So I will give you as many, many illustrations as possible and help you learn the diamond system. If you watch this video to the end, you'll be able to make this nine ball shot easily and consistently. One, every shot is made with running English. So here we're going around the table clockwise, which means that we will be applying right hand English to the shot. And every illustration I give you today, you're going to be using right hand English. You will be playing the shots with just a touch of right hand English. One of the reasons people have trouble with the diamond system is not applying the proper amount of English. You're going to be using just a touch of right hand English as you move clockwise around the table and just a touch of left hand English when you move counterclockwise around the table. So every shot requires just a touch of English and a medium speed. Later on in the video I'll tell you how to correct if for whatever reason you're not able to make these shots. But the one thing you're going to have to learn to do is have a consistent stroke just like every other shot in pool or it will not work for you. I'm going to start out by teaching you the very simple math that goes along with the diamond system. Now if you look at the short rail you'll see that there's two hot spots, two glare spots. Those spots, and I apologize, those are my lights shining down on the table. But there are the table diamonds on those spots. When we talk about diamond counts today, and I say two diamonds or three diamonds, we're not going to be talking necessarily about the diamonds that are on the table. Because as we learn to count the diamond system, you'll find that the short rail is using half spaces as diamonds and the way it works is if you start with the pocket that is right in front of us that would be diamond number one on a billiard table we'll never be using diamond one in our account here but the next half spot between that pocket and the first diamond or where the glare is is going to be diamond two. So when I talk about diamond two, I'm actually talking about the space between the pocket and the first diamond that's on the table. The actual diamond on the table will be number three. Then between those two diamonds would be number four. And then the middle diamond would be number five. Then the half space between that diamond and the next on the table would be number six. And then the last diamond would be number seven. You'll never be using number seven. When I say shoot through the diamond, you're not going to be shooting in front of the diamond. You're going to be shooting from your perspective as if you're going through the table and hitting the diamond on the wooden spot. So you're not shooting the spot that I'm pointing at. You're shooting at the spot where your diamond actually exists or where your imaginary diamond would exist. These diamonds are a specific distance from the cushion for a reason and there's a consistency between all pool tables as to the distance of those diamonds from the cushion. And what you're going to be doing once again is shooting through the diamond from your perspective not in front of the diamond. This is a shot at diamond three which is the first diamond on the table. You can see that I didn't hit the spot in front of the cushion. I hit the spot as if I'm trying to hit that diamond that's posted on the table. So let's count across together with the pocket being number one, the space between the two, number two, then the actual diamond is three, the space between those two diamonds is four, then the next diamond is five, and then between those two is six. The way I do the math in my head really quickly is I just consider the pocket isn't one, so the diamonds going across are the odd numbers. 
three, five, and seven. So if I tell you to shoot at diamond number four, you know that you're shooting between the first and the second diamonds on the table. Your three and your five is going to be your four. There are going to be times that you have to work your way into quarter and half diamonds, but in the meantime, just understand that the two, four, and six are actual spaces between the diamonds, but you're going to have to imagine those spaces when I say to shoot through them. As we move up the long rail, we're going to be counting full diamonds, but we're only going to be counting the space between our cue ball and the object ball that we're trying to hit. So if you move the cue ball from where it is up to the pocket, the cue ball and object ball would be four diamonds away. If you move the cue ball up three spaces, but move the object ball up two spaces, they're going to be three diamonds away. So you're counting always number of spaces from the object ball and the cue ball. And you're always going to be shooting through your number of spaces there apart to that number on the short rail. As an example, if the cue ball and object ball are three diamonds apart, you're always going to be shooting at the number three spot on the short rail. If your cue ball and object ball are five diamonds apart, you're always going to be shooting at the five spot on the short rail. The next thing, and probably the most difficult thing for people to understand, is that you're not going to use the diamond that the cue ball is sitting in front of. For example, in the shot on the screen, the cue ball is in front of pocket, which would be number four on our count. But it does not line up with the four spot when you put the cue over it. So if I count number four, it just doesn't work because I can't line the cue ball up with spot number four on the short rail and spot number four on the long rail. So I find which diamond I can actually line up and that would be diamond number three. I can line up diamond number three on the short rail and diamond number three on the long rail by placing the cue over each diamond. Once again, if I put the cue over the four, which would be the pocket, and the actual short rail spot number four, they would not have lined up. But you can see I've got a perfect line between the third diamond and the third diamond on the short rail. So the shot is just about perfect. This is a concept that sometimes becomes complicated for people, but it is the only way you can learn to make the shot. As you can see, the cue ball appears to be three diamonds away, but when we put our cue over it and find the spot on the short rail that correlates with the diamond that we are with on the long rail, we end up being two diamonds away. So we're going to shoot at the number two spot, which is the spot between that pocket and the first diamond on the table. Remember, half spots count as one. So we're shooting at the two diamond, and that's where our lineup is, and we're able to kick and hit our object ball. Now to some of you, it may appear that I'm actually hitting spot number three. But if you watch the shot over and over again in slow motion, I am shooting between diamond spot number three and the pocket. And the reason it looks like I'm so close to diamond number three is because, once again, you do not want to hit the diamond spot in front of where your imaginary diamond would be. You want to aim as if there is a diamond on the table in the wood at that spot. So from the vantage point that I'm shooting from, I'm shooting through the cushion and at the diamond, not in front of the table diamond. This is a concept that you guys really has to have to grasp because every system that involves using the diamonds on the table involves shooting through the diamond, not at the spot in front of the diamond. There are no systems where you're going to be shooting at the spot in front of the diamond. You're always aiming at that diamond or an imaginary diamond between 
the two diamonds that are on the table. So keep this in mind and make sure you understand this concept. So let's get real world with the math here. We have a object ball that is one, two, we're going to put our cue ball down and this is not going to be a random placement. I want you guys to see what happens in the real world. You're not always going to be two diamonds away or three diamonds away. From where our cue ball is, if we line it up with a diamond on our short rail, to see where we need to strike, we'll find that we're dealing with a fraction. And again, you guys can't see the diamonds that are on the table on this short rail because of the glare, but you have a good idea exactly where that diamond is. If we count two spots over and we try to line it up, we see that we're actually much closer to a spot that is between our two spot and our three spot. So when we shoot through this diamond, we're actually going to be two and a half spots away, which is actually, hate to confuse you, three quarters of the way between the pocket and spot number three, which would be the diamond on the table. This is to show you that there's going to be times that you're going to be dealing with half spaces and you're going to have to make an adjustment as a result. So if the cue ball and the object ball are say one and a half spaces apart or two and a quarter spaces apart, you're going to have to figure out just how close you need to get to that next diamond to make up for those fractional spaces. So in this situation we're not two spots apart, we're about two and a quarter spots apart and that's what we're aiming at, an imaginary spot that is two and a quarter spots apart. And you can see it ends up with a successful shot as we are able to kick at our object ball and make the hit. So let's look at some creative real world situations. Here we have our object ball, but it's on the short rail. How are we going to make this shot? What we're going to do is we're going to count around the table from that spot. How many diamonds away are we? We're going to line it up with a spot on our short rail that correlates with that number of diamonds and that's how we're going to play our shot. So let's go back to the object ball and count. Pocket is one. Next diamond is two. The next diamond is three. And then we want to see if the three lines up with the cue ball and the three on the table. It actually doesn't quite we're really at about the three and a half spot. So we're going to find the line up over the cue ball and see if it lines up with our diamonds. And as you can see, we're somewhere between the three and the four spot as far as our lineup goes. So we're not exactly three diamonds away. We're about three and a quarter diamonds away. So that's going to be our target spot. What would be three and a quarter on the short rail that's where we're going to aim on this shot. A little bit of right hand English. We come around the table and we make a good hit on this ball. Again, we did not aim at the three spot or the four spot, but somewhere in between. You'll learn to make this adjustment over time. So next we have a real world situation where none of this math works. The cue ball and the object ball, which is our nine ball, are not two diamonds apart, which would be wonderful, but are actually about one diamond apart because we can't lay our cue over the two spot. And the cue ball, we have to lay it over the pocket and the cue ball because they are actually one diamond apart. So when we lay our cue down, you can see we're one diamond away. Now, of course, this is an illustration of the diamond system, so we're not going to take the obvious shot of kicking off this short rail in order to hit the nine. If we apply extra English to this, we can go inside the cushion as far as possible with extreme right-hand English. I actually hit it low right in order to put excess English on it. And we're able to sharpen our angle 
come back and make a play on that nine ball. So you can get creative with this system. You can actually cheat the system to make shots that might appear to be impossible. Now, of course, in the real world, you're not going to always be exactly three diamonds away or exactly five diamonds away. And on this shot, we're actually a little bit under five diamonds away. So I know it appears that I'm hitting the five diamond spot, but that's not the case. I'm shooting through the diamond, aiming at where the four and a half spot would be. So that actually ends up being right in front of that diamond. Here's another situation where we're playing at the three spot. Now we almost made that shot and that brings up an important point. You need to decide whether or not you want to make the shot or just hit the ball because hitting the ball gives you a lot more room for error. But if you want to try to make the shot, you're actually going to aim for the spot where the cue ball would have to strike that ball in order to make it. In most of these cases where you're using two rail kick shots, you're just trying to make contact with a ball to keep from giving up ball in hand. So let's play a game. You've watched the video, you watched the video twice. You've gotten all the shots down as far as your numbers go, but when you go to practice this, you're not making the shot. I'm going to give you all the reasons you may be missing the shot. Don't think that your numbers are off on your table. Don't think that you are playing on a seven foot table so it's not working or you're playing on a nine foot table because it's not working because it's consistent across the board. If you're not able to make the shot, there's a couple of problems that you may be facing. One, you may be using too much English on the shot. If you're more than a tip or a half tip away, and for you it's going to be different than it is for me. I have a small tip on a low deflection cue, which is going to mean that I'm putting a different amount of English on the ball than you are. So you may be too far away as far as being off center. You may be too close to the center where you're not applying enough English. You may be hitting the cue ball too fast, too slow. All of these things affect your ability to make this shot. So I'm going to give you a quick guideline. If you are hitting this shot and you are coming too close to your exit point, then you are using too much English. If you're going wide of your exit point, your exit point is where the cue ball is. If you're going wide of your exit point, then you are hitting with not enough English. So make an adjustment, get your shot consistent, and you'll find that once you've practiced it, you'll be able to make it on a regular basis. The shot on the screen, I'm using a little bit more creativity here to make a shot that is on the rail. I showed you earlier how to make shots that are on the short rail, but this one, we don't want to hit it directly because we're playing nine ball and we need to hit the lower ball. So what we're going to do is come off the long rail at an angle that will allow us to hit the short rail. You have to decide what that spot is going to be and that that's going to be your aim point. So as I promised at the beginning of the video, I'm going to show you how to make that shot on the nine ball. Now here, the three and the four point directly at that nine. If we can manage to hit the three from the outside, the four ball will go and play that nine in the corner for us. So what we're doing is we're aiming not for the ball, but for a spot on the rail that's going to collide with the three ball and send the three ball into the four and into the nine. So you can get creative with this system and make shots that normally would appear to be impossible. So someone's played you safe, but you're out. And this is all part of the five shots videos to find that creativity, to find those options where they might not normally exist. So if you learn something from this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. If you did not learn anything from this video, you're either an expert player or you weren't paying attention. Either way, make sure you subscribe. We're giving away a queue soon and you need to be a subscriber in order to be qualified 
to win that cue. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.